Hello, early learners, and welcome back to the art room. It's the day after Valentine's Day. Did you give your love art to someone that you love? I know I use mine sometimes as a placemat when I sit down for dinner and have it at my place and put my plate on it, and then when I take it away, there it is. It's telling everyone who you love and that your house is full of love. Remember, we're spending the week talking about hearts in art. And I told you a tiny bit about James Gold Crown yesterday when I was telling you about what to bring. But let's start out with doing, hello, nice to see you, everyone. Ready? Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. Hello to you, hello to you, hello to you, hello to me. Hello, nice to see you, everyone. All right, James Gold Crown. James, the first sound in his name is J, and that is how he signs his art. J called Gold Crown, not James. I maybe because let's count how many letters are in James. J A M E S. Five in James. Gold Crown. Oh, that's like a compound word. Gold and crown. G O L D C R O W N nine in his last name. That's a lot to sign on an art piece. It seems like it would take up the whole space. Well, today I want to tell you about James Gold Crown. Let's take a look at his picture. Here he is in front of one of his artworks. Now we knew yesterday, I told you that he was a graphic artist and he also would make himself art with hearts. And look, he's even making a heart with his hands. You know how to do that, to make a forward letter C and a backward letter C and put your thumbs together. That just shows that he loves something. And here he is, James Gold Crown. He was born in West London, which is in England, and he taught himself to be an artist. He taught himself to be a photographer. And now he's living in Los Angeles, which is down at the bottom of California, kind of near Disneyland. He's best known as a street artist. He went to school, but when he was 17, he decided he was going to leave school and just begin working. And he worked in a photography studio in the dark room where they put the film and make the pictures in there. And he thought, this is a good job for me. I could go and take pictures of people in fashion. That means in their fine clothing. And after seven years of doing photographs of people and their clothing, he set off for Africa. He had heard there were a lot of people that were sick in Africa and he didn't want them to die anymore because he felt like there wasn't enough money to help them. So what he did was he made a film, a documentary, which tells a story about something. And he, it wasn't like a movie. It was like a story about history and about how to help. And this documentary went on and won two big awards and it raised $10,000. And he gave it all to the people who were sick in Africa and help them get well. So James Gold Crown is well loved in a lot of places because of the work he did to help people. Then he moved to New York and went back into fashion and he started mixing media with his photographs. And then he went back and started painting on walls. He started making murals in New York and Soho. And in order for him to paint things like this, some spray cans, you can just go and spray it and it just stays there. Sometimes if you spray long enough, it will begin to drip. And the drips, he wanted to count how many seconds it took before it started dripping. So each can of spray paint, he would spray on his studio door just to see how far it would be before the drips would start happening. Happening, sorry. And people started wanting to buy his doors. So 
Many of his projects took him to Miami, to Miami Basel. Now, a basil is where artists come and they talk about their art with other artists and other people who are interested in art and people who will help them sell their art. And he started painting these murals and he brought his art to the basil and in two hours it sold all of his art. Every single piece was sold. And now he has these murals where he gets permission to paint on walls and he tapes it off like we did with our tape yesterday and he begins to paint. And this is a brick wall. You can kind of see the lines on it. And he started painting these while he display or shows these artworks in New York and Los Angeles and Miami and London in Shanghai and Tokyo. And people also privately buy his art. Well, I wanted to tell you about this little book we're going to read today, and it is called Mail Myself to You. And I'm going to read and sing it. When we have our book, you will see that this is called Mail Myself to You, and it's written by Woody Guthrie, and it's illustrated by Vera Rosenberry, and it's a let me read book. It is so tiny, but I love this song, and it has more verses in it than is in the book but I'm going to tell you it because I think your teacher probably knows it. It's one of our favorite books as teachers because it's telling about a valentine that you're going to mail. Wait till you see what the valentine is. It's called Mail Myself to You, and this is the delivery stamp that you put that they put across the stamp so you can't use it over and over again. And there's a little dog here in the mailbox. Let's see how it starts. It says, I'm going to wrap myself in paper. What are they mailing? Themselves. I'm going to wrap myself in paper. I'm going to dab myself with glue. And dab is like this. Dab, 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 dab. So they're going to dab themselves with glue. I'm going to wrap myself in paper. I'm going to dab myself with glue. Look what she's done. Now stick some stamps on top of my head. I'm going to mail myself to you. The second verse is this. I'm going to tie me up in red string. I'm going to tie blue ribbons too. Wait till you see where she goes. I'm going to climb up in my mailbox. I'm going to mail myself to you. Isn't that a cute book? And when we do this song in a classroom, we do it like this. I'm going to wrap myself in paper. I'm going to dab myself with glue. Stick some stamps on top of my head. I'm going to mail myself to you. It's a great book. Now, let's get ourselves ready for our project. Let me put the table up on my lap the frame, the frame table on my lap. Oh, it has a little pink paint from yesterday. Getting my, oh, it still has a little blue tape. Let me move everything off of here because we don't want anything to stick to it. Now, we've been using oil pastels quite a bit. And I wonder if you remember which are the warm colors and which are the cool colors. So I'm gonna bring my black paper. I'm pretending this is the wall like James Goldcrown used, his black background, and he's going to put hearts all over it. If you don't remember how to make a heart, I want to show you. It's really two thumbs put up. If you draw around one thumb and draw around another, that will make a heart for you. Or it's a backward and forward C put together. So you make your hearts. It doesn't have to look like mine. And I brought two containers. I wonder why. If we're talking about warm and cool colors, what do you think I'm going to do with my chalk pastels? Right, I'm going to put warm colors in one. So pink is kind of made from red. I'm going to put that in there. Red is also a warm color. I'll put that in with that. Yellow is a warm color. This Yellow orange, like a pumpkin, is a warm color. The orange is a warm color. This okra color, which is kind of yellowish with a little tiny bit of brown, I'll put in there too. 
Maybe I'll put some white just in case I want to use white. And it's not a warm or a cool color. It's a lack of color. So I'm going to put it in both. I'm going to put in the warm and the cool color. So we know that blue is a cool color. Let's put it in the other bucket. Because when you're doing this art, when you look at James Gold Crown's art, he has a variety. And he puts the art and puts the colors all over. He doesn't keep doing red in a row, red in a row, red in a row. But if you want to, whose art is it? Yep, it's yours. So you can decide. If you want to put all a row of red ones and a row of orange ones, you decide what you think looks best. I am going to do mine all over in a variety of unity and variety. Unity means it's unified because they're all hearts and it's a variety because it is different colors. So I'll move these. I think all the rest of these are already in here. So I'll move this over. And boys and girls, I know that you know how to count to three. So I'm going to put my heart and I'm going to draw it. Let me move these this way. Draw it three times. One, two, three with my chalk. Then I'm going to use my finger and rub it three times. One, two, two, three. And it will make it kind of fuzzy, kind of like James Gold Crown's fuzzy art. And we want that to look like that because it's called bleeding hearts. So we want it to look kind of fuzzy and drippy. It's his love wall. I'm going to start out with this color. Now I'm going to go up and make my C and come down to a point. Go up and make my C and come down to a point. If your heart looks anything like mine, great. If it looks like your own variety, that's great too. Now I did it one time. I'm going to go over it right on top two times. I'm going to go right on top three times. I have my tissue ready to rub my finger. I'm putting this back into the warm colors. And I'm going to go one, two, three. I'll wipe off my finger. And I also brought a piece of newspaper. Now you do not want to blow this. Even though this is just looks like dust, it'll get on other things and you don't want that to happen. And I just tap it and let the little pieces go off on here. Keeping it folded so it doesn't get on this chair in the studio. Now, should I do a pink one right next to it? Not if I'm doing it the way I want to do it. I want to do it like James did. I wonder if I can pull this down and bring it down as my inspiration, and I can. I'll turn it to you. Look how he has them all right side up. And they are all kind of the same size. Not this exact same shape, but you get the idea. So I'm going to do a few more. I think I'll go on to, maybe I'll put an orange one near it, but not right on top of it. And he overlaps some. Maybe I will overlap here. So I go my C, that goes down to a point. A C goes down to a point. I'm going over it second time. And a third time. Now, boys and girls, you see I'm kind of doing this fast because my hands are older and I have been drawing for a while longer than you have. Now, what's the next step? We draw it three times and we rub it three times. And so you count one, blend it two, blend it three, blend it four. What is the next step? That's right. Tap it off onto my newspaper. I'm going to open it back up and tap it off, close it up, and move it back. Do you notice when I went over this, it didn't mix it up? Shall I turn it so you can see right side up? Here are two of my hearts, and I'm ready to start a third. I think I like the idea of a white one. I think I'll put it right here. A C. Oopsie. I'm going to get that off of there, boys and girls. I crackled it and I don't want it to mix up with the other, so I'm going to shake it off into my newspaper. Here we go. Just like the oil pastels, these things will break, and I didn't do it on purpose, so no one needs to be angry. Now, if you were going to just break up all your pastels, I think someone might not like that very much, and they would say, well, if you can't take care of your things, maybe you don't need them. Second time, now I need to do my third. One, 
more time. And we know what the next step is. Rub once, rub twice, rub three times. What do I do? That's right, shake it into my newspaper. I'm going to use some cool colors. I think I'll put a green one here. Make my C go up and down. Up, ooh, I have to hold my paper when I'm pressing so hard. Oh, it only made one little crackle and I'll put that in there. And go over it a second time. One, two. And on my third time, three. And I rub once, twice, three times. There we go. I think I'll do a turquoise one up here. So make my C that goes this way, but make it go down to a point. Make my C go backwards and down to a point. Go over it second time and go over it a third time. And we all know what to do now. I did make it crackle a little, boys and girls. You know how I like to get it off of here right away. Otherwise, it, I'm afraid it will smash into my other art, and I don't want it to happen. So I rub it three times. One, two, three. Oh, that mixed a little bit. The blue with the orange kind of made a little green down at the bottom. I'm going to use a dark blue. I wonder if it'll show up on this black paper. Put my C, ooh, just barely, just barely can see it. Two, and three. You can see why you have to do it three times because sometimes it just doesn't rub out well enough. Two, and three. Let's take a look and let you see how it shows up. Shake it. Is yours coming along with mine? It does show up pretty good. All right, let's try another one. I think I want, I did the lime green. I did the dark blue. I did this, did I do this one? I don't think so. Is this one this one? I can't tell which one I've done, boys and girls. Let's do another white one over here. A white one. Once, twice, three times. James Gold Crown. You know his hearts are done with spray paint. They don't let children buy spray paint because the fumes aren't good for you. And I think that um, if it's used on a wall, you have to get permission. Because you've seen people who write on walls and you say, why don't they just write on their own walls at home? or on their own fence and not do it around our city. Because if they don't have permission, that's just not nice. I'm gonna do a yellow one here. One, two. Oh, it's really mixing with that blue next door. I don't know what will happen when I rub it. Let's find out. One rub. Oh, it mixes into green. Oh, I'm gonna wipe my finger off. We'll see, oh, this looks good. Two, three. Can you see what I'm getting excited about? Is the green down here? It did mix. I think it looks like I need a few more red and orange and yellow ones. I did this one, I did a yellow, I did that orange. Let's do an orange one right here. Forward C, down to a point. Backward C and down to a point one time. Two times and three times. Rub it once, rub it twice, rub it three times. Boys and girls, I hope you're able to do this art with me because I don't know how fun it is to watch someone else draw a bunch of hearts and rub them. You could always 
come back and do this. You know, I wanted to tell you, if you don't have the chalks and you wanted to do it with oil pastels, it just won't have the same effect. And you can use sidewalk chalk. I have used sidewalk chalk on art that asks for oil or chalk pastels. It's not as bright and it's not as easy to smooth, but that's something you can get easily. But if you go to the store, they do sell these chalk pastels. Count with me three times. One two, and three. I would want to cover this whole paper to make it look like the one from James Gold Crown. So I'm gonna do a bit more. And you see over here where my fingers were? I can use my paper towel and wipe it off. It'll come off if you get that. I also wanted to tell you if it's kind of smeary, because now if I rubbed my arm across here, it would smear all into each other. But if you spray it with really inexpensive hairspray, which you can get at that store where everything is a dollar, it sets the chalk and makes the chalk kind of melt into each other and into the paper, and it isn't as dusty. So make sure if you want to make that at home and you don't want this to get on anything else, you could spray it with that inexpensive hairspray, and then you would want to hang it up somewhere so that it does not get on your furniture. Let's finish up some of these um, open areas because I would really like for it to be um, covered more because it. I think it looks better if it's completely covered up with the hearts. You, by now, I don't even have to count out loud because you know how many to do. So I'm doing that. I'm going to go around it. You notice I always start at the top and go down, pull down, because it brings kind of the dust into one area, and that way I don't have it smearing around on other places. But I can show you what it's like if you don't do that. And you know what else? I also want to tell you, when you're doing art, and we learned this when we were learning about Georgia O'Keeffe, that she made things fall off the edge of her paper, so I'm just going to pretend. Big C down, big C down. Because I want to make sure that I have color everywhere so that it looks like it's complete. So I can do that rubbing, two, three. And I could make hearts come off the edge, like pretend I'm doing a heart over here and off the edge and pretend to go over there. But I still need to do it three times, Mrs. Reed, right? Oopsie. I did the second one with the lighter one. Sometimes I can't tell which color is which because they have they are so similar. One, two, three. Now, let me tell you about the artist that we are learning today. We also are going to talk about him again tomorrow. And we're going to do an artwork where you're going to cut out hearts and they're going to have a big, big, deep V in the middle. So you'll need scissors black paper. This is the time that you'll want a variety of um, colored construction paper. I, I'm sorry I started telling you about our Wednesday project when it was really for Tuesday, but you'll need black paper just like this. And we will cut out hearts and glue them to the paper. So you'll need black paper, the variety of colored construction paper, scissors, glue. I'm using a black permanent pen because that black permanent pen is going to outline the heart that we cut out. Now some of you might want to cut out the heart and um, after drawing it, but I'm going to cut mine out and then draw the black on it. I'm still doing a few more hearts, boys and girls, because you know what I said, I really like it to be complete and have color lots of places. I think down here I might want a yellow one. Isn't it fun to do the same subject in our art all week long? Sometimes we do an artist all week long, and sometimes we do a certain kind of art all week long. And this week, we are doing heart art. The word art is hidden in the word heart. Let's see how this looks. You might think I need a few more, but I think it looks pretty good so far. Let's put it up next to James's work. His are smaller, but you know why? It's because the camera angle is taking it from farther away. I hope you enjoyed this project, and we'll sing 
Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. Goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to you, goodbye to me. Goodbye, see you next time, everyone. I was thinking about that love song and all the letters. And we said L is for the way you look at me. It could be love is for the kind of licorice I like. You can think of all the things that start with the same letters. Boys and girls, this heart art has been so much fun. Remember, take good care with this. Don't set it on your carpet. Don't set it on your um, furniture. Go hang it up somewhere. And I will see you tomorrow.